Hey guys, so I'm going to go over like what I'm still collecting in Magic the Gathering and it is uh, foils. And they're not just any foils, they're old school foils, right? They're beautiful foils in the, the olden times. I grew up with uh, foils actually meaning something. So if you hit a foil rare, it meant that you didn't get an extra rare. So foils were quite expensive because, uh, again, you know, I had a friend and all he did was collect foils. So for me, I could take my foils and just trade it to, for him for whatever I needed because he would give a premium at that time. This was before, e this was way before EDH. I think EDH started in 2009-ish. I remember EDH being huge, right? Huge in law school. So that was 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. Um, EDH was like taking off like a rocket. But prior to EDH, there wasn't necessarily a reason that you wanted to have like a nightmare. So I mean, they were cool cards to look at, but there's not really any bling to it. So I think EDH really took some of these cards in the moon. Greater good. I mean, some of these cards are just some of the most beautiful cards you can make. Birds of Paradise is a beautiful card. Uh, these. Uh, now, my opinion on these, I get these a lot. <laughs> um, I don't get this guy a lot. I don't get th this, uh, oh, I don't get the old school. So, like, I I get it. It's a Mana Crypt. It's a Mox Opal. It's a Mana Vault. It's a Soul Ring. I paid $1,700, $1,800 buy list for it. I get it, man. I paid out the nose for these cards, right? But, in my personal opinion, uh, again, this is my personal opinion, having paid a shit ton of money for these cards, they're not as good as the original foils because they're not as rare. And that sounds crazy to say that the masterpiece is not as rare as a foil, but the print run, you have to understand the print run of these older cards are just insanely small. Um, and you're never gonna see them. And if you do see them, it's probably the, so like if you see a, you know, any of these cards, a spell book from eighth edition, or I guess it's ninth edition, Day of Destiny, uh, Maul Daughter, whatever that is, Kega, and Foil, you have probably one chance to pick it up and then it's gone. The masterpieces, you know, I, I see them all the time. Um, even though they are rare, they're, they're very hard to pull, they're very expensive, they're probably more expensive than other foils in this collection. They're not, in my opinion, as rare for a collector to have. So most collectors are going to be more recent and if they have, very valuable foils, it will be that type of foil, not this type. Uh, this is what I grew up with, Married in Besieged, Fifth Dawn. I remember in high school, uh, we bought a booster box at Fifth Dawn from Dave and Adams, and we opened it on the tennis court. And it was very windy, and we probably lost and damaged a lot of cards. And we and, and in one booster box, you're hoping, you, you, you were, I think you were guaranteed, I don't know if this was right, but one booster box you were going to get one foil card foil rare and you know that was it but you could get a lot of foil commons and, and so on so like one foil rare per booster box is quite hard to come by yeah and and it meant something it definitely meant something that if you, you got a foil rare it meant um a lot uh, and that was in high school. So I remember Fifth Dawn was in high school. So Meriden and, and Dark Steel and all that. I remember Dark Steel. Um, my friend and I, my best friend and I, we used to go to Target because it was next to the retirement house we volunteered at. So we would volunteer calling bingo and doing retirement house stuff. At um, And across the street was the Target. And the Target was, uh, they would sell cards, right? And we actually had this thing where, because we did the retirement house every week, we would buy a deck. We'd buy a theme deck. I remember the theme deck I bought had this giant worm in it. It was like a 9-7 worm or something. And the theme deck he bought was all about equipment. So it must have been dark steel. And then every every time we would go meet up and do volunteer work as a way to reward ourselves, we would buy one or two packs. And then we would open the packs uh, together. Uh, and then we would put the new cards that we could put in our theme deck. And then we would just play. Um, so I have some really, all my fondest memories of Magic the Gathering are old. I don't really have many fond, I have some really amazing memories from law school. Um, and, you know, that was great. I have some great memories from NYU, but probably my fondest memories are uh, in high school and middle school and elementary school playing Magic. 
And a lot of this is from that period in time. Like Fifth Dawn was senior year of high school. Dark Steel was junior year of high school uh, when we were volunteering at the retirement house. Like this is uh, fifth dawn. This is, I mean, I if I see a fifth dawn one, I'm. This actually used to be the most expensive card in fifth dawn. I remember it, and I could never pull it. And for the life of me, like something like this, like grinding station until ED8s came along. Like, what the hell is it? Like, why, why would people want it? Then the ED8s came, and then it was like, wow, okay, that's a good card. Uh, Radiant. Oh my god. Uh, so that was in. Uh, let's see. Or is this, that was in elementary school. Uh, I remember Urza Saga at GameStop and Radio Shack. Uh, we actually had in our mall, Exton Mall, we had two Radio Shack or two GameStops. One in the bottom floor, and one in the front floor. The one in the uh, top floor did not sell Magic cards. It was the one at bottom floor. And I remember when they first released. So Pokemon First Edition came out with Urza Saga. I remember that vividly. I remember seeing Urza Saga. I remember seeing Pokemon First Edition side by side. And you can pick one. Uh, both very good sets, you know. Both, you know, obviously a Pokemon First Edition worth probably ten times as much, right? Urza Saga is no dummy; it's worth a shit ton. But I remember pulling that Radiant and thinking, "Oh, it's an angel!" You know, at that time it's like whatever, an angel, right? And uh, I thought it was great. Uh, I thought it was great, so I spent a lot of money on the foils, right? This is the first time they had foils. Was Seventh Edition and Urza's Legacy. Urza Saga had Lightning Dragon and some like test print foils. I'm not really sure about that type of stuff. But um, it didn't have like regular foils. Or Urza's Destiny also had foils. I remember seeing a foil powder keg. Uh, that was a pretty cool card. This is actually my AOL username, Shivan Phoenix. <laughs> so, I mean, this is like the stuff that I'm, I I I remember. Like Onslaught, it was middle school. That's, that's not Onslaught. It was that Torment. McKadian Mask was middle school. McKadian Mask was one of the weakest sets of all time. We still love playing it. Ah, Meriden. Yeah, so I was telling you, Meriden was all through high school. And um, a lot of these cards were not, like, super valuable. Legion. Oh, I remember Legion. What was Legion? Legion, like, middle school or something uh, when it came out. Uh, and there was, like, a secret place I used to buy all my old ones. And they had Stronghold. They had, like, this is, like, unheard of. They had, like, Stronghold packs for basically the same pack as McCadian Mask, the same price as McCadian Mask at my local grocery store near the lottery tickets. <laughs> you know, it's just so weird. I would have bought out every single one had I been a little smart. Oh, there's Onslaught. Look at this one, Tainted Pack. No one, if you know, you know, Tainted Pack is not a cheap card, man. I think it's borderline, what, 600, 800 retail? Maybe more, I don't really remember. Onslaught, um, Draco, yeah, Draco was middle school. I remember playing with my neighborhood friend Andy and he really wanted Draco and I was like, this card sucks, no one can summon him. Uh, this was high school, the Kinrens were high school. So my username, after, so Shivon Phoenix was my AOL username and then I then AOL kind of like deleted itself, right? So then I needed another username uh, and it was uh, Inferno Kinrin. In fact, Kinrin was my MTG Salvation. I was the moderator of General MTG Salvation for about a year. And that was my, you can still go there. It's Kinrin and, and it's a picture of a, a kitten. Um, but that was my name, Kinrin, because I thought that was kind of cool. So like, all, I can tell you a million different stories about like growing up with magic. But I'm a dying breed. I understand that 30, I'm almost 37, uh, July 1st, 37. Um, there's not many of me left. You know, these old stories I can tell of. The actual people who played when they were younger and grew up with magic their entire lives, there's not many of us left. They've, uh, and I've talked to them when they sell their collections to me, unfortunately, right? Um, people grow up, they get, they need money, and this stuff is money, right? I mean, this stuff is, the rarest of the rare. Um, oh, Brea, I gotta make that deck soon. Anyway, I guess. <laughs>